When you're considering entering the crypto markets, I want to discuss an indicator that offers levels of support that traders use to buy or establish a new position. Now, Fibonacci retracements are based on the Fibonacci ratio. And at mathematics, this is known as the golden ratio. It's seen in biology and also in architecture. What you do with Fibonacci retracements is you pair a recent trough and a peak. And you divide this distance by the key Fibonacci ratios of 23.6, 38.2%, 50%, 61.8%, and 100%. And these give you key levels of support. Now, I'm going to show you how to draw these Fibonacci ratios. And let's go over some charts to outline that right now. Now, the first Fibonacci retracement chart we're going to look at is a chart of Bitcoin versus the US dollar. It's a daily chart and the exchange is Coinbase. Now this is a chart of when Bitcoin reached its peak of 20,000 in December of 2017. And I wanna just show you how well these Fibonacci retracements held. The first level of 38.2%, this pullback, held as kind of a short-term support on the drop. And then at 50%, there was actually stronger support which resulted in a almost 40% rally after that Fibonacci retracement level held. However, if you look at this chart of Bitcoin, you'll notice another pattern that's going on here. You've got your classic head and shoulders pattern, and then once this neckline was violated right here, there was more sell-off that occurred. So this chart of Bitcoin retraced all the way, almost all the way, to its 100% level. And then on the way up, these Fibonacci retracements which once were support are now resistance. So this level here, which held as support at 61.8% at about 10,800, then became an area of resistance. So you'll note that not only do these Fibonacci retracement levels work on the downside, but also on the upside as well, they serve as kind of a resistance point. Now, I'm asked the question, why do these Fibonacci retracements seem to work? They just sound like magic numbers. And the truth is they work because people believe they work, and so it becomes self-fulfilling. So look at this chart of Ethereum versus the US dollar. It's a daily chart, it's on Coinbase. This is a similar time period to when Bitcoin hit its $20,000 high and pulled back. This is early 2018. You'll notice that Ethereum peaked at around 1,400 and then dropped to about this 50% retracement level on the Fibonacci numbers before bouncing but then the 23.6% ratio acted as almost as a resistance level. Again, this is a classic head and shoulders chart where the head happened at 1400, you had a right shoulder around the 1200 hour level, and then the neckline, which was once support, was quickly broken and that led to lower prices. So on this chart of Ethereum, what I'm looking at is a 100% retracement from the highs in Ethereum. Remember, Support then turns into resistance in the future. So this price level right here at 983 then became resistance when Ethereum bounced off the low. And I want you to consider that. And the reasons for this is that people who had been buying at the support level are now breaking even when it gets back to this price. So in order for them to break even on the trade, they have to become sellers. And that creates a resistance level here in Ethereum. So I'd like to illustrate that not only do these patterns hold for Bitcoin and Ethereum, but they hold for other altcoins as well. And you can basically apply them to any crypto asset you're trying to analyze where to buy and what's a good entry point. So this is a chart of NEO versus the dollar. Again, it's a one day candlestick. This is kind of the 30,000 foot view. If you want to zero in closer, you should use a four hour or maybe a 15 minute time frame. But I like to take the long view. And this is on the Bitfinex exchange. Now, this was the swing low here at NEO, and I paired it with the swing high here at about $198. And you'll notice this chart looks similar to Ethereum and Bitcoin, the two we just reviewed. You've got a head here, a shoulders here, and support happened at this 50% retracement level. Now, what's interesting about this is you've got a classic head and shoulders pattern again, followed by a violation of the neckline at this price. Then, NEO saw resistance at that same price at the 50% retracement level, but once it broke above that 50% retracement level, the resistance point here then became support again. 
So you'll notice when you're trading and you're investing in crypto assets, how these levels are key because they swing between a place where you want to buy the crypto asset and a place where you want to sell the crypto asset. So this level on NEO, this 50% retracement from the early January highs, is now becoming a support level. And so if you're a buyer of this, this is the level that, or, or the price level you want to buy it at. Now let's look at some moving average crossovers, which can also serve as entry points. Now the first chart we're looking at here is a chart of Bitcoin versus the dollar, and each candle represents 240 minutes or four hours of time. This is on the Bitfinex exchange. Now I've drawn two exponential moving averages already on this chart, the 20-day and the 50-day. The 50-day is in yellow and the 20-day is in blue. Now the key levels here are when the 20-day moving average crosses below or above the 50-day. So you've got a cross right here where the trend shifts and this signifies a time that you should be selling whatever crypto asset you're looking at. And in fact, once this moving average crossed, you saw a 40% or almost 50% pullback in Bitcoin till the bottom. Now, I've said this before, when these moving averages diverge, if you're in a position, this is time to get out. You don't want to wait until the moving average crosses over again at this point. I think if you have a huge divergence between the moving averages, that means that the short term is extended, which happened down here. So when the moving averages are this wide, it's time to take a profit if you're short. Now on the flip side, if you want to buy, you want to do it when the 20 period moving averages crosses above the 50 period moving averages. And I've signified this with this arrow right here. So this happened at a price level about 8,600 on Bitcoin and it carried it to about 12,000. So if you're doing this trade, it's about a 30 or 40 percent return in just a very short period of time. And one of the reasons why it's important to wait until the trend changes is because you might get some false signals down here that the trend has changed. And I think in trading it's important to think between the 30 yard lines. You don't always want to have to play between the 100 yard line on one end and the 100 on the other end. The highest probability trades are going to occur just in between the 30 yard line. So this is a good illustration of that. Now the next chart, another moving average, is Bitcoin versus the dollar. It's a daily chart on Bitfinex. And this goes all the way back one year time. So on this side of the chart, we're looking at March of 2017. And the first thing you'll notice is that Bitcoin had an incredible move last year. And listen, anyone who bought Bitcoin in the last year and held on looks like a genius because the chart just went up and up and up. We've, had, we've gone through one of the greatest bull markets of all time. But if you're just following this trend trading strategy and buying when the moving average actually crossed over, that would have gotten you long down here in Bitcoin, which is below 1,000, and would have told you to sell, sell when it crossed over on the other side, which is 13,000. So you're looking at a 1,300% move when the trend was never violated. So if you're thinking about a long-term strategy and move, using moving averages, uh, you might want to consider using these moving average crossovers.